For the first time since the pandemic hit, we finally had a local swap here in Metro Detroit. And that means one thing, new fish. And also, a few weeks before, a fan of the channel had reached out and offered to give me some new fish since he was changing his setup. So let's head into the barn and take a look at these new fish. So let's start off with the fish that I picked up from a fan of this channel. I definitely do appreciate him reaching out. So due to the requirements of the new fish coming in, I had to change the 120 gallon tank that originally held my Capilixes and Kaus Discodeids and the Mollies. I have moved these fish to other tanks in the fish tank barn, but let's go have a look now at the new fish that are inhabiting this 120 gallon tank. I was really excited to get these Geophagus 1 Milleri, which I do think are some of the most beautiful Geophagus that you can get in the hobby. The original owner had received these from Dan's Fish as small juveniles, and they've grown up quite nicely. These fish are found in southern Venezuela in the wild, and have the same care requirements as your typical Geophagus species, enjoying a sandy substrate and tropical temperatures. So along with the Geophagus, we do have this electric blue Acara, which is really an amazing specimen. I really do enjoy the blue color of this fish, which really does make it stand out. This fish is also extremely peaceful and is a great fish for your community tank. In the wild, this fish will hail from South and Central America, where it inhabits slow moving lakes and rivers. This is another fish that I'm really excited to have here in the fish barn. So next up are these Pandagara. These fish are known to be algae eaters, but will also consume a wide variety of other foods. These fish inhabit slower moving streams in Southeast Asia. Along with having some in the 120 gallon tank here, I do have some other specimens in various tanks throughout the fish tank barn. If you've been watching some of the fish room tours and new fish reveals lately, you'll know that I've been kind of getting excited about bottom dwellers. And these green laser quarries are no exception. These fish come from Peru and have great coloration. As with all Corydoras, these are schooling fish, so you will want to have at least six or more for them to feel comfortable. So the last fish I want to feature here in the 120 gallon tank are these Bolivian rams, which are native to Bolivia and Brazil. Like the electric blue Acara, this is a peaceful species and can be kept with a wide variety of different tank mates. And unlike its cousin, the German blue ram, this fish prefers your normal aquarium temperatures. You may have noticed that there are a few other fish that you may have seen in past fish room tours. So the Epistogramma cockatoides, cardinal tetras, and angelfish made the move to the 120 gallon from a different 75 gallon tank, which is being changed as part of a project that will detail in a future video. So along with these fish, he did give me a plethora of plants, which came with a bunch of shrimp as well. So I'm definitely very appreciative of this generous gift. So now talking about the swap, I definitely did pick up quite a few live bears. First one I want to show you is my first Gambusia species, the Gambusia clarcubsia from San Felipe Creek in Texas. What's unique about the San Felipe Creek it's only 15 kilometers long. So this is definitely a special fish with a very limited range. I am pretty excited to have this fish in the fish room and excited to see if I can get some fry from them. I was also really excited to get these black plume tail platys. While they do look like normal black platys, if you look closely at their tail, they have a cool plume tail extension in the middle of the tail. These fish do have the same care requirements as your typical platy and are currently living in this 29 gallon tank with a group of guppies. I'm definitely pretty glad to be able to find these fish since plume tails are generally pretty uncommon here in the United States. I'm really excited to see some fry from these fish 
and see how the plume tails develop. So definitely a fish to keep an eye on in the future. I've also picked up a couple different Gidead species. The first one here is the Black Prince Gidead or Krakadon Audax from El Toboso in Mexico. Like all Gidead's, these fish prefer cooler water and will actually start to fall apart if they get too warm for too long of a period of time. One thing I really do enjoy about this species is the black finnage on the male, which makes it a really stunning fish. Like most Gidead's, this species is endangered in the wild, primarily due to destruction of its habitat. So I'm definitely happy to have this fish in my collection and definitely looking forward to getting some fry, even though this species is known to be predatory towards its fry. So definitely a fish I'm pretty excited about. I also picked up the Scyphia francese, or Golden Scyphia. I've had this fish before, but unfortunately sold too many of them and didn't leave myself a large enough colony that eventually it died out. I am happy to have these back in the fish room. These fish are from the Rio Teochitlan in Mexico and are extinct in the wild. Luckily, the hobby has maintained these fish so we can still have them around. I'm definitely looking forward to breeding these fish and getting some fry back in the fish room. The last live bear that I did pick up were these white albino guppies. It's been a while since I've added some guppies to the fish room so it was about time that I got some more. One of the things that did draw me to this particular strain of guppies was this really nice coloration, especially on the tails. I have them here in this 20 gallon tank with a group of variatus platys and really looking forward to getting some guppy fry. The next fish is another fish that I've been looking to get for quite a while. The Pseudochronolobus multicolor victorae, which is also known as the Egyptian mouth brooder. This fish is native to Egypt, Rwanda, Uganda, Sudan, Tanzania, and Kenya, where it's found in slow-moving streams and water. I really enjoy the yellowish sheen on the males, which I find quite striking. These fish are maternal mouth brooders, where the mother will hold the eggs and release free-swimming fry. This is definitely another fish I'm looking forward to getting some BAP points for.